Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 9th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, of course, today Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, we got patches for 50 vulnerabilities, five of which are critical. Two had previously been disclosed and six of these vulnerabilities were already being exploited. Kaspersky actually has a blog post about an attack that uh, led them to two of these already being exploited vulnerabilities. They call it a puzzle maker. The attack used three vulnerabilities in total, one remote code execution vulnerability against Google Chrome, and then two of these vulnerabilities that Microsoft patched today that are privilege escalation vulnerabilities. Also interesting, the Google Chrome vulnerability was first found or disclosed as part of the Pwn to Own program mid-April. A day later, a proof of concept exploit was released without any sort of sandbox escape mechanism. And the attack that uh, Kaspersky found just happened uh, then another day later. So April 14th, April 15th is when uh, Kaspersky did see the fully weaponized exploit chain being used in the wild. Google actually released an update to Google Chrome about a day before on April 13th. So definitely, you know, make sure you keep those browsers up to date. Those vulnerabilities are exploited pretty quickly after they become known. And now, of course, we do get the fixes from Microsoft for these privilege escalation vulnerabilities that were used as part of this puzzle maker attack. Additional noteworthy vulnerabilities being patched by Microsoft this month is a authentication bypass vulnerability in the Kerberos app container. It got a CVSS score of 9.4. There is also a remote code execution vulnerability affecting Windows Defender. And Microsoft rates the complexity of a potential attack as low. And this month, we also got a patch Tuesday from Intel. Intel released a total of 29 different advisories, fixing 73 vulnerabilities. Lots of them affect uh, various uh, bias and firmware issues. And that's, of course, always a little bit difficult to patch. Also, some Bluetooth issues uh, being fixed here. So... uh, Take a look at it and uh, see if you're affected by any of them. You may in some cases have to wait for patches being released by a particular OEM that you did purchase your system from. And yes, Adobe is still publishing advisories in sync with Microsoft. Today, we got patches for 10 different applications of note are again Acrobat and PDF reader, five critical vulnerabilities in these products, Photoshop, uh, two critical vulnerabilities here, and then also Photoshop elements with uh, one important vulnerability. Also affected are Animate, After Effects, uh, RoboHelp Server, Creative Cloud Desktop Application Experience Manager, and Adobe Connect. And if you are running CentOS 7, which well isn't going to end of life till about uh, three years from now, uh, June 30th, uh, 2024, you may experience some problems with Let's Encrypt certificates due to the old version of OpenSSL being included with CentOS 7. It all comes down to an issue that actually also affected sort of Android in some ways. And that's that originally when Let's Encrypt first started, they did not have their own root certificate. So they used someone else's root certificate. Once they did obtain their own root certificate, they used both this older and their own new root certificate to sign certificates that uh, were issued by Let's Encrypt. 
The problem has been that this original certificate that they obtained did expire. So they were able to extend that somewhat. Uh, it expires actually on September 30th in 2021, so this year. But uh, they are now using a little bit of more complex sort of cross-signed structure in order to be able to extend this older certificate till 2024, which will help some old Android versions and other uh, IoT devices and such that have issues updating these root certificates. But the problem is this more complex uh, cross-signing structure is not supported by OpenSL 102, which is the version that unfortunately Red Hat Enterprise and CentOS 7 are using. So you have a couple of options here. Uh, you can upgrade to OpenSL 1.1. Uh, I've done it uh, on CentOS 7 systems, mostly to support newer versions of uh, TLS, for example, but uh, it's messy, it's not easy, nothing necessarily recommended, and uh, something that, yes, uh, may break some other things in not very obvious uh, ways. The other option, of course, you have is, well, upgrade uh, SendOS. Now, SendOS 8, which is the most recent version of SendOS, had some problems of its own uh, with sort of how it will be supported in the future. So uh, not an easy decision here. For the most part at this point, I think stick with SendOS 7 if you have to and uh, deal with any issues that you encounter with Let's Encrypt. Of course, uh, this may be an issue if you are are retrieving certificates from Let's Encrypt. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.